GPT-5 has just been released and along with it, some super powerful new features for us print on demand sellers. The problem is that most sellers are still using it the same exact way they were with GPT-4. Solving bite-sized problems and little things here and there, but that's not at all tapping into the true potential that GPT-5 has within it. That's why in this video, we're going to be jumping right into things and showing how we're able to use it to build a full-blown print-on-demand brand from top to bottom. So now let's take a look at some of the things we're going to be using GPT-5 to build. So first, we're going to be using it to build, essentially from the ground up, a brand new print-on-demand brand. So that means we're going to be doing niche research. We're then going to validate from that research which niche is best out of those. Then we're going to have it come up with a brand name, come up with a logo, and then start generating design ideas and even creating the designs. Now, this is so crazy because we literally have a 31 plus hour course showing people how to do exactly this. It's completely free, but everything that we're about to see is what's covered in stages one through three of the course, which is give or take about 10 to 12 hours. So it's not only a huge time saver, but behind each of these are lots of different prompts that us and our coaches have custom built specifically for print-on-demand sellers. This is not some AI slop. This is specifically tailored to print-on-demand sellers. So to give you just one small glimpse for the niche validation step, this is the prompt that's being built into that. So you don't even have to read this or understand it. It's It looks like a lot to me as well, but that's why the good news is you're going to get access to the brand builder GPT by clicking the link down in the description below and it's inside the free school community for you. But first, let's see what this thing is capable of. And the thing to really take note of as we're going through these steps is look at how little involvement I have in the entire process. It's honestly crazy. So first off, we start with step number one, which is niche research. And you'll see when you log into the GPT that you're able to prompt it to start from a lot of different points, but it's designed to literally start from the very beginning all the way through to the end of building a brand. That's where I got started for the sake of this video. So I asked it to pick a print on demand niche for me. And what it's going to prompt you for first is what are some of your interests? Because we've seen time and time again from working with hundreds of students that the best niche to go with is one that you are already in yourself for a couple of main reasons. But that's not the point of this video, but we want to pick something that we are interested in because then it makes us you know, more excited to work on it essentially and we're able to come up with better ideas. So I just wrote down three of the things that popped into my mind. I like space, I like hiking, and I like books. Then what it spits out, again, from its print-on-demand domain expertise is it researches 10 profitable POD niches related to my interests for 2025. And it's evaluating it on three main categories. So first is recent trends. Next is best-selling products. And then third is competitor analysis. So what it's basically looking at is, is this thing relevant right now? Are there best-selling products that are out there in the market that we're able to learn something from? Or does it kind of feel like we'd be grasping at straws if we went this direction? And then third is, what's the competition doing? First and foremost, is there any competition? Because if there's not, it's not really a good sign for the niche. But these are really the three big categories we're evaluating. Again, back in our course, this is what we do across several hours of research. It literally did it all. And the crazy thing that you'll notice about using GPT-5 is that it's so much faster, but it's not so much faster at the sacrifice of quality. Like, yes, it's not quite, you know, AGI, you know, Terminator's not quite here yet, but it's pretty darn incredible what it's capable of. So what I see when I'm looking at this is space exploration and lifestyle, the target audience which is good to know, but doesn't really change. As long as these three things really are you know, strong signs, then we're in a good spot. But it came up with space exploration, lifestyle, hiking humor and adventure, book lover culture, astro hiking adventures, which as soon as I saw that one, I was like, I don't even quite know what that is, but it sounds really cool. And it's basically a blend of two niches, two of the niches that I mentioned, hiking and then space. Then fantasy and sci-fi readers, then night sky photography and enthusiasts. So. Right when I see this, I'm like, space exploration, I'm like, yeah, but I'm not really looking to do a NASA brand. Hiking, humor, and adventure. Hiking's a really good niche, just like one of the most common ones, but I like that it put the humor and adventure spin on it. Then book lover culture, I'm like, I wrote books, but it's not something I'm that passionate about. Then astro hiking adventures, again, I like that one. I'm waiting to see what it really is. Um, then fantasy and sci-fi readers, I'm like, again, I'm not really such a big reader that I would find that interesting. Then night sky photography enthusiasts. I'm interested in building a t-shirt brand and you know, night sky photography 
doesn't really it looks great on wall art and canvases but not really for a t-shirt but the beautiful part about it is that that's the analysis that i do but it breaks it down and gives us its own thoughts so it then summarizes and picks out the one that initially before it's done the audit it thinks has the best chance so really it's doing a lot of research then it's giving us its personalized suggestion of what it thinks we should be looking for and so it came up with these seven topics and then here's where my <laughs> Uh, I played a pretty big role in this, said, do you want me to go ahead and audit these now so we can lock in your best niche? And I said, yes. And then it did it. <laughs> so uh, I then did a niche feasibility audit. And basically it's looking for three main things. One, is the market size large enough? Two, is it a market where people are passionate enough that they would wear it? AKA the bumper sticker test, as you may have heard us talk about before. And then step three is feasibility and monetization. So feasibility being, is there IP risks? Like in order for us to really dominate this niche, we need to be doing like movies or song titles or, you know, copyrighted works. Like video games is a tougher one as an example, because a lot of things that people consider as video games is like video game characters, which you can't do. So it's analyzing all that for us. And then finally is monetization. Is it a market that one, people have at least some disposable income and two, they would be willing to dispose of some of that income in the name of their niche. Those are the things that it's looking for. And as you can see here, it quickly ruled out fantasy and sci-fi readers. It knew that that one was going to require too much potentially IP infringement for it to be really suitable. And then best part here, it does the same thing. It gives us a verdict. So it came up with astro hiking adventures, unique, low competition, emotionally charged visuals, what it's really doing here is something that every good print on demand coach should do is it's visualizing once this brand is out there into the world, once it's up on a store, what's the emotion it's going to evoke from the customers? Are they going to care or is it going to feel generic? And two, are the designs we're able to make really striking and vibrant or are they things that kind of blend in and, you know, nobody would really be that interested in them. And then third is it something that there's a ton of competition? Again, we're just gonna blend into the masses or do we have a real chance to stand out here? And that's how it came to Astro Hiking Adventures and it gave me it as the final suggestion here. And so again, I played my super important role in this whole equation and I said yes. So now it moves, as soon as I said yes, within about a fraction of a second, it had outputted all of these brand names. and. What it's been told is that the names should be something that's memorable and easy for people to read and goes well in a domain name. Those are the three main criteria amongst others that it's looking for. So it came up with names like Trails to the Stars, which that one's a little bit too wordy, but then it got into much better ones quickly. Cosmic Treks, Astro Trails, Stellar Summit, which I thought Cosmic Treks was cool. Galaxy Hikes, that's kind of generic. Nebula Path, that doesn't really mean anything. Moon Peak Outfitters, that's kind of cool. Orion's Trail, Celestial Footprints, Milky Way Miles. Yeah, so normally the best ideas are in like the top five here, just with AI in general. I don't know if it just gets kind of lazy halfway through, but don't get me wrong, super incredible technology, but that's one thing you can look for. Typically the best ideas are closer to the top here. That's a star in case you couldn't tell. And then again, it does my personal favorite part of this whole process is it recommends three of them. And so the one that I personally like, Cosmic Treks, did not make the cut. So I trust in the AI overlords and I went with Astro Trails. So there, I had my opinion. ChatGPT had its own opinion. So we compromised and went with ChatGPT's suggestion. Then it immediately, as soon as I said yes, or I said Astro Trails, I put in more effort this time. Then it goes into the logo concept, like right away. And it doesn't just, you know, just start generating. What it does really well is it first maps out and comes up with essentially a picture in its mind. It's mind, Jesus, personifying AI is a scary time to be alive, but here we are. Uh, but it comes up with a, a vision for the logo before it actually generates it. And then it comes up with the prompt. So what you can do here is either read through this and see if there's anything you'd like to change. I personally didn't do any of that. Uh, as soon as there's a wall of text, I just skip right through. And then I just do my job and I say yes. So I said yes, uh, because worst case, like if you don't like the output, you can just tell it what the change doesn't really matter. I said yes, and, in a, and I included <laughs> the logo so you could tell that it's actually in a single shot. In a single shot, it generated this, which the reason I love this is the name is super high contrast, very easy to read. 
it's almost built in as like a favicon meaning like the little thing in somebody's browser window like the little logo that shows up there it's already formatted to like go well like that opposed to some logos i see they're like either super drawn out or they're like stacked on top of each other and while they can work it's just not good for all formats so it gave us a super easy to work with logo that's simple enough that it doesn't overwhelm or distract from you know the designs on the site but it's also you know aesthetically pleasing enough that it actually looks cool and it it kind of sets the tone for the overall brand and then right from the logo literally after it generated this it didn't even wait for me to say like good or bad it kind of learned that I was just saying yes, and it started researching designs. And this is where things get really interesting because this is where it's using the design research training that we teach all the time, which is looking for visual styles and colors, popular motifs, I never use that word, but like essentially phrases and quotes, and emotional residence. And then finally, the print style. To put it in layman's terms, my terms, <laughs> it's basically what colors are people using, what are the phrases that are in the designs? What kind of uh, emotion does it evoke when somebody looks at it? Like, is it factual? Like, oh, there it is. Is it emotional? Like, it just draws you in. Is it humorous? Like, that kind of thing. And then finally is the print style, which you could think of this as kind of synonymous to art style. Like, print style comes from what type of machine is being used to print the t-shirt or print the design on the t-shirt that's where it like technically comes from but the way ai translates that is into the art style so like a dtg directed garment machine has a different kind of like sheen or like style to the ink when it's applied to the shirt opposed to like a screen print it more like fades into the fabric like just as an example it's taking that and it actually becomes a really powerful variable to play with in our prompt formulas and so it came up with a couple of different trends like cosmic landscapes astronaut adventurers which this is one that i've seen a lot of times like especially on uh like into the am they have a like one of their all-time top sellers or like collection of designs is like astronaut adventures like hiking or in like a desert moonscape it, it's pretty cool then star map trails retro space travel posters which we're just going with t-shirts glow in the dark elements which we can't really do and then surreal mashups so out of these it came up with three and again this entire flow took me it's taking me five times as long to explain it as it did to actually do this so point being you can always go back and just do it again then i say create the prompts and then it outputs prompts that are pulling from these ideas so these ideas up here it's then turning them into okay how can we generate a prompt that would create a design that's like that not going to read through all the prompts, but here's just 10 of them. And of course, you could just sit here and ask it to generate 10 more, 10 more. And then down here, here's the very first design. This is step six. It generates the designs and it's taking the prompts that we see above and then actually generating them right from within the chat, which end to end what we've just accomplished or what I was bystander to as it accomplished it is we went from no idea what niche we were going to sell to. We validated the niche. We then generated the logo, generated the brand name. It did an exceptional job on literally the first pass and then it went right into okay like we know who we are we know who we're selling to now let's figure out what we're selling now obviously this step here where i would recommend continuing from is have it generate times 10 designs 10 initial designs and then pick out out of the 10 there's probably like three that it really nails if not you know it, there might be a, a couple more there's probably going to be two that you're like, meh, just flatline, like take it or leave it. Then there might be five that are just like AI slop and just garbage that you don't want to work with. But that's okay because what GPT-5 also does really well is it does a good job of learning from the feedback that you provide it. And this is where a lot of people fundamentally just misuse AI. They use it like a tool opposed to a co-pilot or somebody on your team that you're able to coach. It is not just a tool like Canva. Canva, you tell it what it did wrong, it doesn't care. It, it's Canva. But here, if you tell ChatGPT that, okay, you did a good job with these three, like really build up its confidence that when they take over the world, you know, we're, we're in good. And then these two were just okay. And then these five were really bad. And if you just bullet point out why each one was good, just a couple of words, like really good concepts, great colors. And then over here, like, very common ones that I see are the phrase doesn't make sense, 
very generic, too many colors, no negative space. Those are a lot of the common things that AI messes up with when it comes to generating designs. If you just reply with all that feedback into the same conversation and then have it generate 10 more design concepts and then actually generate from those prompts, it improves every time. And now it's not a direct translation like next time it's going to get four right, then five, then six, then upwards of 10. There is definitely a point of diminishing returns. So don't be shocked if you don't ever get to the point where it's, you know, 10 out of 10 are fantastic. But that's okay because we can literally just have it keep generating over and over again. So if you want to test this out, click the link down below. You can get access to the GPT brand builder goes through everything that we just covered and a lot more. And I'd love to see in the comments down below what you create. And again, the way you get access to it, click the link down below, join the free school community, and then search for the title of this video in the post and you'll find access to the GPT. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.